I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey, what's up, AfterBuzzers? I'm your host, Angel Saunders. Hey. Tonight, we finally start season one of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, season 10. We finally start part one of the reunion, <laughs> season 10. <laughs> Ray Silva, who was hey in the building with us last season, mm -hmm. and yes. we are just gonna dive right into it. What did y'all think about tonight's episode? I kind of already know a little bit, but I wanna I wanna hear from y'all. Um, this episode was what I expected. It was boring. <laughs> um, so, but I mean, the first part is always gonna be like that. They save the juicy stuff for later. But I'm ready to see what you guys thought. I'm so curious to know why Jennifer was so angry over absolutely yeah. nothing. She was angry over nothing, y'all. So what I thought, I, I did think that the episode was very lackluster. They didn't mm -hmm. have enough drama. But I don't think that first, like, first parts of the reunion show should be boring. I think that you should come out the bat juicy so that you can grab the people's attention. Because tonight, but I already kind of thought from the last episode, like the finale, that the reunion Union was going to be boring because we saw at the barbecue, whatever, picnic, whatever they were doing in the backyard, no one really had any drama except Teresa and mm -hmm. Danielle. So it's like, all right, we're going into the reunion shows. Everybody's on a good note. So I'm like, I don't see where any drama would come from. And tonight, the only drama I really saw was uh, Jennifer. But I think that maybe she just had some built up stuff. I think I they'd think be coming so for my girl. Yeah. I think um, they, <laughs> I think they, ahead, wait. they tried to do. <laughs> that whole drama thing by having Jennifer and Marguerite go back and forth a lot but it just came off as annoying. Yeah. Like there was a point where I just took my earphones off because I was getting a headache because it was just la 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 and there it. was nothing mm -hmm. to what they were saying. Look, I <laughs> once again I don't know why Jennifer came on in so angry like what happened prior to the cameras going on that she was so mad at the world and she literally had to snicker at every single thing that mm -hmm. somebody had to say mm -hmm. or a comment or a face like the only person that's used to doing that is Teresa and she was ironically very chill. calm tonight. She was very chill calm. tonight. It was, it was strange because I did notice that uh, Jennifer seemed like the most opinionated one tonight mm -hmm. and that there was just like unnecessary drama. It's like where is this even coming from? Because yeah. as I've said, the last episode was okay. Like no one was really getting into it but I don't know, maybe it was the producer saying alright, we need drama but the gag <laughs> is there is none. Well, I think Jennifer is just like you said holding on to a lot of stuff because even though the very last episode focused more on Teresa. It's not like she had any, um, you know, solid moments where she fixed her issues with any of the mm -hmm. other women. It yeah. was kind of just glazed over. So on top of that, when you're re-watching the episodes and you're catching up on everything, whatever emotions faded away most likely came back. And we all know Jennifer is pretty immature. Mm -hmm. And she allowed those emotions to take over. And she's like, you know what? These girls are always bullying me, so I'm going to show out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing with, Je uh, with Jennifer. She creates her own problems, mm -hmm. in a sense. And she really needs to learn to just back up, take a deep breath, or really just go head on for attack the problem, not the person. She has an issue with attacking a person, not the problem. And that's what really her pent-up anger is based off herself. Mm -hmm. Not technically because someone's done anything spiteful directly or indirectly towards her, mm -hmm. but she's caused this drama and it's ricocheted back on her instead of attacking the pro any kind of problem that might arise. Yeah. Well, we will for sure come back to Jennifer, but I definitely want to get on to, uh, to more of this reunion. We saw Andy definitely brought up the threes company topic that we have been talking about the whole season with this <laughs> Dolores, Frank, and David, mm -hmm. a.k.a. who. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was interesting to see that get brought up, but I also felt super awkward for Dolores because she's such a sweet person mm -hmm. to me. Like, you know, Dolores really is a neutral party. She just has fun. She doesn't let anyone walk over her like she's just a cool person but they like I think Andy like really got into her not in a mean way but like in an Andy way mm -hmm. and like oh, of course always in an Andy way <laughs> yeah and like was asking what's going on with the whole situation and I think it's so strange that they all live together 
Like, yeah, it's super weird. <laughs> but you know that one friend that wants, like, that one friend that keeps it real with you, that always, like, gives you that wake-up call yes. and, and yes. wants you to self-reflect? Yes. Even though Andy is a producer, that's kind of the role I put him into when it came okay. on to that situation with Dolores because he's kind of a neutral party, and also him sharing the opinions of outside people from the group, he probably thought this is a message that Dolores needs to hear. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm glad. I didn't, I don't feel like Dolores felt awkward with it though. I think she handled it pretty well. She does good under pressure. I don't think she felt any pressure with it. Because she was a corrections officer. She should do good under pressure. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she got like, like emotional stuff and professional <laughs> stuff is so different. No, I mean, she did like admit that she feels resentful towards David yeah. because, you know, she's like, I've been single 21 years. Like, if I say I'm ready, then you should jump on that or whatever, but I think she was honest about feeling hurt, but it also kind of showed in her face a little bit to mm -hmm. me when they would play the clips back, and then, like, you know how they have the, like, in-picture picture or whatever mm -hmm. and even like when Andy went around saying who wants Dolores to kick him to the curb to kick David to the curb and it looks like on everyone's face they all wanted to raise their hand but, <laughs> but they were scared yeah they were scared or yeah. just didn't want to disrespect Dolores who's such a cool person and who is their friend but I think it was what uh, Margaret who was like well I think she deserves better like that was her mm -hmm. way of raising her hand mm -hmm. which I feel like they all wanted to do mm -hmm. well I don't doubt that David's a good person however I do if we put <laughs> you think he's a bad person probably so what? Here's, here's, what, here's what I think about David if we put ourselves in David's shoes technically we live the same life he does we're always going mm -hmm. to and fro the entertainment industry is very demanding we can be gone at all points of times so I've missed holidays I've missed birthdays I've missed you know family outings to be dedicated to my job so that's understandable in that aspect but as individuals and especially we're older we're in our late 20s at least right <laughs> so um when it comes to relationships we should always choose ourselves first why we play this game of we need to lock them down and convince them that we're good enough and that we're ready at the same time is the wrong the, I think Dolores is playing the wrong game she really needs to just put herself first if she if David's not matching her like she said he hasn't met her halfway on many points why does she continue to put herself in that situation yeah, I think that to she set could, herself up. She could have very well cut that relationship off a long time ago mm -hmm. before she continued to get more and more invested. I think that that's a problem that, you know, people suffer from in general. Like, yeah. not even just Dolores. I've been guilty of it. I'm sure you guys have probably been guilty Absolutely. of it. But, I mean... Like, when they were at one of the many functions they were at, and someone was like, oh, where's David? He's at sniper school. Come on now. Like, that is just ridiculous. And also how you said, you know, sometimes work comes first. It does. I've missed holidays, birthdays, mm -hmm. and stuff as well, because in entertainment, it doesn't stop. Like, I, I work in radio, both at home and out here. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Radio's on 24-7. Yes, like, it, it doesn't stop because it's Christmas. It's still on. Yeah. But at the same time, I think the older you get, the yeah. more sen seniority you get in your job, and you can get a little more leeway. Mm -hmm. That's what you work for, right? That's why you put all those years in so that you can be able to experience certain things. Mm -hmm. And come on out. That and sniper school. Well, I think, I think on top of that, like you just said with the whole seniority thing i think david makes a personal choice to put more at work in hours mm -hmm. work into work than necessary because he knows that he has a woman that's going to make excuses for him and accept his bs and be there regardless so we just have a basic case of a man who's super comfortable that's why he's a bad just person like, he's not a bad person <laughs> he's just like he's inconsiderate and Very. like you said Very. with being in the entertainment industry we do go non-stop however the difference between us and being self-aware and considerate people is the fact that we're not going to know we're dragging someone and mm -hmm. holding someone back and leading someone on with promises of am I building this two million dollar house just so you won't move in like it's yeah. you're dangling the bait and I want a bite so you can reel me in, but you're still just dangling it. Like, you're yeah. playing a game. And I got that. that's what David is doing. I got doing. somebody to do this to me. And mm -hmm. Did you smack him? No, I walked mm -hmm. away. No no questions, no explanation. That's good too. And I think that's what Dolores, she has to get to that point where she walks away with no explanation. Yeah, she has to get fed up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And 
like I said, just put herself first because he is very comfortable mm -hmm. with her knowing that she's gonna cover for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, sniper school is a lame excuse. That was the worst. You don't have nothing. Nothing <laughs> in regards to your career or your relationship needs to have sniper school. Right, I just so can't even keep a straight face with that. It's so effort. ridiculous. If and this is this is the message for anybody watching, for a man or woman. If a man or woman does not put you first, why are you giving them any of your energy, and why are you putting them above your own mm -hmm. self worth? Yeah, right. Don't be a wife to a boyfriend. Yeah, always stay the girlfriend or always stay the boyfriend, because if you get too complacent and you become the husband or the wife, you're boozing to go find another husband or um, girlfriend or boyfriend. And put that foot down early on. Like, let people know what you expect out of it. And exactly. if they can't give you that, then you have to go. Like, Look choose at yourself. And Joe. Yeah, like, choose yourself. You know, girlfriend, boyfriend. You know what? I just, something just took over my spirit. <laughs> okay. All right. Speak because on it. Speak on it. The thing is, I low key relate to Dolores because. I, I don't know if it's just the East Coast of me, but I have, like, this tough girl thing about me, too, when it comes on to my emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's easier for me to just kind of not express my wants and needs and desires because I'm that's a moment of being vulnerable. And then I'm setting myself up for expectations, and I'm afraid of being let down. And so that could kind of be a defense mechanism that Dolores has about herself, where she doesn't set those boundaries, she doesn't say what she wants, because she's afraid that she puts it out there and David doesn't deliver, she has no other excuse to stay. I mean, and okay. you just gotta leave if you have that no other sense. excuse to stay, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it's like, if you know these things about you, and not just you, just, mm -hmm. you know, you in general, myself, Dolores, Russell, whoever, mm -hmm. if you know these things about you, oh, I have a habit of accepting, change it. You know, like you have, to, you have to be able to work on it. Yeah, you have yeah. to realize it, mm -hmm. one, and then you have to work on yourself and make yourself better. Like in life, period. Like mm -hmm. I go, to, I'm going to the gym three times a week because you okay. know what? I'm working on myself. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. not yeah. that, but mm -hmm. when you when you start to put everything in order, every per, every person or relationship, I'm trying to rephrase that, every person or relationship that comes into your life serves its purpose, and you have to know that it's served out its entire purpose, mm -hmm. and you have to know that you're ready. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what Dolores is missing on this relationship of what purpose it's served in her own spirit and her own life for the fact that she can finally move on and just look past it. Because you're going to be one of two people when you leave a relationship. You're either going to be the bitter, angry one yeah, because you're not fulfilled entirely and you're not done yet, or you're going to be the person that says, you know... It, it served its purpose. Mm -hmm. I learned my lessons. I enjoyed my moments. But unfortunately, this path is alone by myself with somebody else. Right. Yeah. Relationships mm -hmm. have an expiration date, guys. Mm -hmm. They do all of them. I reached out recently. <laughs> Yeah, I think we talked about that a little he's bit. he's not the bitter one. A little bit before the cameras <laughs> were kidding. rolling. I'm really just playing. I'm really just playing. I, yeah, but, you I appreciate know, every single person that's been in my life. <laughs> relationships are important, just as important as our viewers, their relationship with us watching our shows. Yes, we appreciate your loyalty <laughs> and trusting us with just delivering amazing shows for you guys every single week. Thank you so much for tuning in and making After Buzz TV the ESPN of TV talk. We couldn't do it without you guys. So we need you to comment and subscribe and like and give us thumbs ups all across the board. Make sure you give us five star ratings if you're listening to us on iTunes. And don't be afraid to follow and watch our other shows that we have here at After yes. Buzz. We have other reality shows. We have interviews on red carpets. We yes. have popcorn talks. We yes. have on one on one spotlight on interviews. There's so much we're creating for you guys. Like and my it's Instagram all for story. free. It's all yes. for free. Free. Yes, yes, Free yes. 99. So hmm. go ahead and <laughs> the best price. watch all those other stuff after you finish watching our show. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Thank you so much for that. And tonight, uh, okay. <laughs> tonight, uh, Dolores was not the only one in the hot seat. We saw them get on Melissa. Well, we saw Jennifer mm -hmm. get on Melissa about a fake storyline. A few, it. a few, a little, little, I'm getting tongue tied. A few <laughs> fake storylines, but what's so interesting to me is, and I'm a, I don't know, something about Jennifer, I'm still just rooting for her, but they get on her so hard when she calls things out, but as Bree just said, you've been saying it the whole season, and we've been wondering the whole 
whole season, like, well, not the whole season, but for <laughs> a while, is Melissa going to be pregnant? Like, is she going to have a baby? They did all of this talking, and then she said the slip up on the show that she was pregnant with a show, and here's the reunion, and unless it's coming in the next two parts, she's still not pregnant. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. I mean, tonight they brought up, well, Jennifer brought up Melissa's fake storylines, which included... Alleged fake storylines. Alleged fake storylines, which included Melissa having a sister that her dad, like a, a secret love child or whatever, and I remember that. Mm-hmm. Um, what else the was The restaurant. There? The restaurant, and then also the pregnancy. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, we've said on here, Melissa's kind of boring. Like, she's, I mean, not that she's not a bad person or anything. She's fun. She's cool. She's gorgeous. But are you entertaining? Like, Joe's funny. I don't think she's boring. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> Breeze, like, If you please. follow her personally, if you follow her personally in her, on her Instagram stories mm-hmm. and her lives and everything like that, she's fun. She's outgoing. And she could be an influencer. She, right. This well, is think, Real Housewives of Atlanta, of, of Jersey But on you have Bravo. to remember, Teresa always comes first. So Teresa might, or she might not be able to take that spotlight from Teresa and really come into her own on the show. It would be drama if she did, which I think Bravo would, would, would like it. But I, all the other women have their own places. Margaret has issue, has had issues with Teresa, and she's still entertaining. Dolores has been on Teresa's good side, and she's still... Everybody has their... Brings something to the table I but Melissa. I think she Melissa. needs to go back to singing. I think Not she that just, she's great I don't at know it. about that. I think she needs to <laughs> find a different path. But I think maybe like not on the show? Not on the show. Yeah, and and that's why, you know, Jennifer brought up the fake storylines and she gave three valid examples Very and valid. Like we've said on this show before, she's boring. Like, this is just for a storyline. So I just don't understand why they get on Jennifer so much when she makes a comment. But literally everybody is saying it. Like, even when Andy had the cards in his hand, I think that uh, he also mentioned something like that. Like, I think he brought up something that Jennifer didn't even bring up. And I always wonder, how does like how is Andy's cards already ready? Like, is it that scripted sometimes on the show? Because I know sometimes Andy will ask the questions, but then when the girls just get to bickering and stuff, Andy be like, oh, so Lisa from uh, from Washington <laughs> says, it's like, dang, you was just ready. I mean, everyone has a speaker in their ear. Mm-hmm. So even yeah. if it's not on his card, someone in the back could be like, hey, True. actually, there was a tweet that blah, 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 blah. Because they could be like, yeah, yeah the you've back, got, they probably you know? have a person that's just for probably. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're, you're right, you're right. Because I'm like, Andy is, okay, he's, he's keeping it. up. Okay. Yeah. That, and he has Watch What Happens Live. So he talks about these things every All the single time. night. Yeah. They yeah. talk about they talk about housewives even when there's not even an episode of Housewives. It could sure. be like Below Deck and Housewives will still come up. Yeah, I love Below Deck, <clears throat> but I also of course love Real Housewives of New Jersey, but tonight <laughs> it just I don't I don't know, it just wasn't all the way there and uh and yeah, so Melissa's got her fake storylines. I don't even have anything else to say about it cuz Melissa's pretty I think Melissa's storyline would be she needs to be like a Kim Cattrall, like a like a boss in this fashion. They need to really show what it's what it's like to go out and get the fabrics, what it's like to hire the models for the fashion shows, what it's like to prep. Because fashion show prep comes months and months before any of that takes place. Mm-hmm. So they really should hone in on but, that because her business is doing so well since her partner you know, wonder, pull the rug underneath her. I wonder how hands-on she really That's is. That's what I was going to say. Like, is Melissa... That would be I don't, I don't think she's out. a designer. I think she's I just think so no, not a designer, owner. but she's going out and she's picking the pieces from all these high-end designers. It's a high-end boutique. Yeah. So that takes... You have to have... An you can't eye. just have random high-end things, yeah. right? It all has to kind of match a scope. It can't be like going to Japan where there's a lot of pleatherish, plastic-ish outfits. Mm-hmm. Or, like, futuristic outfits. Or then you have something like this that's very elegant and shiny and cute. Or you have something like you or I are wearing Mm -hmm. that's very, like, one-tone, just complimentary to the body. That would have been nice to see on this episode, on this season, (laughs) instead of a a pregnancy thought that went away over a trip into the Jersey Shore. Like, that. But pregnancy, I do think, is an interesting thing, especially to a show that's catered to women. Um, we've seen on other TV shows, even like the Basketball Wives franchise, I forget who it was, maybe Evelyn or something like that. But she actually did the in vitro process. Gen- yeah, like, she just Melissa talked about it. She had a phone made conversation. made a call to her doctor, didn't do anything, went on a trip to the Jersey Shore and said, I don't want a kid anymore. Like, yeah. that was not worth covering. And that's what my girl Jennifer said. But yeah. <laughs> Which moves on to my next topic of 
of they were just I don't know they were coming for Jennifer and that didn't need to happen but they were talking oh. they did talk about how she's always mm. throwing stuff which mm. isn't the best thing to do but both Brie and a viewer wanted to know why Melissa never do anything maybe Throw that could have been part of her storyline <laughs> like, them hands exactly. not that mouth she always gets up and she's like I just think you're annoying and I wanted to wring your neck and uh, Jennifer's like I'm shaking <laughs> no I'm <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer was like, did you? Did you right. want to wring it's my like, neck? <laughs> you might want to, but you're not gonna you're do not it. Going so to. why are we having this conversation? Oh gosh. And I don't even like Jennifer. But that was <laughs> but if you're but if you're saying something that's real, I'm gonna give you credit. Like yeah. that's real. Who's threatened by Melissa? She's so sweet and just the girl next door and just like And she's proven she's not about that life. I don't know. I mean look, like I've said before, Jennifer has not probably never been hit. Because she's real quick to grab something and throw it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, she's a little too brave, is what (laughs) I think. She needs an ass with She does, because if you are wiser than that, and you've been here, and you've had a couple licks, Mm -hmm. then you would know, know, like, let let me tread lightly. Because I don't know what anybody at this table is capable of. I don't know. I also think that, although maybe Jennifer does need that bleep whipped, that, uh, (laughs) (laughs) that... At least she has the balls to say what everybody else is thinking. It's like even Melissa, when they were having the lunch, and she's like, you know what? Uh, Jackie's smart because in 30 years, her kids are going to be straight. Like, she's saying it with a smile on her face. Like, it's always like she, I guess Melissa tries to say what people are thinking, but she does it in such a lighthearted way that it's like, I don't know. Like, she's, she, she, ugh, she doesn't have to be a threat or anything like that, I'm but it's just she- like, she she's like a little lightly. mouse or something. She like has to she's tread just lightly. an adorable stuffed animal. And then at least like although Jennifer can't say the wrong thing sometimes, majority of the time she is saying what everybody else is thinking. I think Jennifer's on her way out, to be completely honest. Same. I don't think so. Because I think so she's too. very much if you think of housewives, it's very typecasted. So there's always gonna be a certain type of person that's a, there's going to be a loud one. There's going to be an overly violent one. There's mm-hmm. going to be a drunk one. There's going to be a business one. It's a, it's a consistent flow of people, right? So Jennifer is the equivalent of Siggy. Mm-hmm. And Siggy didn't last that long. One and season. Siggy and the twins are almost mirrors of each other as well from season six and seven. So... Jennifer, I believe, is only maybe a two, three season kind of girl, and then she'll now, be out on her way. While I do like kind of still do like Jennifer, I will agree with the that she may not last a long time. And my only reason for saying that is because who does she still get along with? She's gonna to me be like Dolores and Teresa. I think that's it. Yeah, but Dolores is just such a neutral person, you know. Like no, Dolores like likes her. Yeah, yeah, Dolores yeah. I just likes her. maybe one more season and she'll be like a Danielle where nobody uh-huh. wants to be around her. But I still like her. But I could see how. Who are you going to talk to? I wouldn't mm-hmm. mind her doing appearances like Kim D mm-hmm. and just like pop in, get on somebody's nerves, <laughs> come back for like three like episodes villain. just for that, Across and then the leave. Yeah. I'd be cool with that. Yeah. But I can't take an entire season with her. And also, if you look at the tweets and what other people think, she's getting on a lot of people's nerves. A lot of viewers mm-hmm. are not feeling I don't Jennifer know. I, like I, I'm about Teresa. It. I'm Teresa in this situation because I don't see it. Like, Teresa's so like <laughs> clueless and I'm right. Why, why don't people like like that's how I feel about Jennifer but Teresa's hey. very dodgy as well she, like tonight she didn't confirm or deny anything it was just kind of like well there's she just things... like deflected like that's what they were saying and that's what she's saying yeah you so... do. yeah Andy had to literally ask her so what do you yeah. think for her to... <laughs> girl she's trying to stay neutral or something I don't know I do think that some of the girls on here are too sensitive that you know it was just a lot of I feel like fake in your ear drama, like the producer saying, all right, now be mad about this because nothing they said is like worth being mad about. This might be a whole other conversation to have, like what I'm about to say, but maybe Housewives, the facade of Housewives is on its way out in general, because look at all the big, the big time players are all leaving. Nene's leaving uh, Nene's Atlanta. Not, no, she's not. I thought no one wants to film her anymore. No, she, no she's not leaving. There's been rumors, are but sure? I don't. I don't she know. She just did an interview on Breakfast Club, and she said that she's not leaving. I, I did okay, see good for Nene. <laughs> yeah, I did see that she went there, but I didn't um, watch it with the audio. But, but yeah. there are a few big players though that are all leaving their franchises. And because I think, I think they're you know they're getting so much work outside of it that they feel like they don't need it. Like their brand has gotten so big. I don't like think Nene's. 
one is that big or famous. Who? Vicky Gung. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> is she the blonde one? From OC Housewives. I think I She's do know. Original. I think I do know who you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that wasn't meant to exactly. shade on my head. No, that head. was all shade, and I really appreciate it. <laughs> That's funny. Thank you but... so much for watching our podcast. <laughs> but yeah, I think that, that these other women just get big. They're huge on social media. They have like other opportunities, like what Nene did, The Apprentice, or something like that. She um She's and, on a um, comedy tour. Yeah. Yeah. right now I don't think she'd be funny enough to go see but I mean <laughs> people will go yeah people will go because yeah. the franchise people is huge the, mm-hmm. the franchise is huge Nene has a huge fan base Joe had a comedy show it's I like mean, but they're opening the Real Housewives of Salt this is a whole nother conversation but the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City like I don't want to see that <laughs> okay we already have right. sister wives we don't need to see it again <laughs> all the castmates are going to be related and have the same husband like hey, stop I don't know there, it's a lot Shades of cities of it's a lot of cities it's a lot going on and I think that as time goes on like how many se- seasons has Nene done like how many seasons have some of these I'm women done they just 13? that's what I'm saying like maybe it's just time to move on like and even with the regular job sometimes you're like okay I've been here enough years well Nene has said during her interview um, that sh- the reason why she wants to make sure she stays on is because Real Housewives has created such a huge platform for her to be able to do other things. Yeah. So what? And it's her baby. So because she's an OG, she has no intentions of leaving. Yeah, and I think I, I'd be okay with it if I had been on it that long already. Because it's just so normal. It's like, and I, here's my daily Kardashian bring up or whatever. They like, <laughs> they're like, they just get so used to the cameramen and stuff, and that's a part, part of their, their daily lives. lives. And mm-hmm. I think uh, this might have even been on like Bill O'Deck or Vanderpump Rules. I don't know another show that I was watching there like sometimes the camera people know their business before their immediate family does because these are the people who are around them all day long for months and months and months and it's like well, getting, it becomes like a family getting back to Jersey mm-hmm. I almost question this whole cast's next move like what is Teresa's actual next move She's is she gonna be a model seedy. yeah is she gonna but mm-hmm. like what outside of housewives I right don't so know the Kardashians they... have the show, but they also have makeup, they yes, clothing. Exactly. Like, so that's my thing with Teresa. What's her next move? What's Melissa's next move? Probably what's another Margaret's book. next move? Margaret's doing jewelry. Okay, cool. Is it really gonna get that big? Is she that's gonna expand on it? Yeah. Jennifer, what is she gonna do? Her husband is she gonna be her husband's be a assistant? Life. Forever? She's gonna be a real life She's not housewife. Work. A real life one. Dolores, like my thing is what's all their next steps? Yeah. So I they don't, they need maybe, to keep maybe going. Maybe it's just Jersey to me that's just starting to just kind of run uh, dwindle away. Yeah, cuz yeah, this cause finale, I haven't found the right connection. Whew, this uh reunion and the finale was just forced. Well, yeah, yeah, but I don't know. Got some news, Russell? Andy? <laughs> Check it out, Andy, cuz I got your daily <laughs> Jersey housewife news. <laughs> So the Gorga family is actually getting a little bigger. Okay. It's Wait. Been co- I'll keep going. <laughs> it's been confirmed that the Gorgas have hired an au pair. So they're not having a baby, but they're hiring an au pair. An au pair is a foreign person Wait. who works who works with house as how as a housekeeper or child care in exchange for room and board. And usually this person is younger and they're foreign and they're coming over and they're living in their homes which my thought on that is could this be the unspoken surrogate that we've all been expecting to hear from because Melissa and Joe have yet to post this girl on their social media she's their caretaker and taking care of the house and their children so why wouldn't she be the equivalent of carrying a child because no one knows of her she's not a local she's international right that could possibly be the next thing. I don't yet. think so. Only because, mm. like, if you're a surrogate, I'm not about to have you cleaning my house. You're going to sit down with your feet up and carry that baby. My thing like, is that's your she only said that all pair is... isn't a, a surrogate. All pair is a helper in the house. Yes, yeah, but, but I'm saying, could this be the unspoken surrogate? Like, is this the cover up saying that, oh, we've hired someone to come with housekeeping and help with my kids because I oh, was so busy stupid. right now? Or, mm-hmm. like, uh, well, I guess we're going to see when the husbands come out on the third yeah, part. Yeah, we still have, for some reason, two more episodes. My second news <laughs> that I have is Danielle is finally speaking out about the trio fallout between her, Teresa, and Melissa. Danielle chimed about the infamous hair pull and said it was a setup by the production team. And she felt like she was cornered and she was being pushed out of the franchise in, in its entirety. Danielle also said... No one would know who Melissa was if it wasn't for her, because if you guys recall, back with when the Gorgas and the Judices were fusing were feuding, Danielle actually dubbed the infamous line, Did you acknowledge your nephew at mm-hmm. one of the um 
reunions. Therefore, she did have a connection with Melissa, but she said the only reason that Melissa and Joe are they're at where they're at today is because of her, and all they did was use her to get onto the show to create a platform. If that's the case, I say, hey, Melissa and Joe did a great job, and they used Danielle <laughs> for what they needed, and now they got her off the show, so they're not in her hair. Or she's not in their hair. Well, if Danielle feels like the producers are pushing her out, she opened the door for them and allowed them to kick her out. And I mean, doesn't that seem pretty clear? She's not holding anything in an opening credits. Like, she's not. She's, not anymore. That's what I'm saying. For like, a long time. It's like, duh. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> lastly, Dolores is out here saving lives. Okay. The Jersey Star will be having a viewing party next week for part three of the reunion to benefit the Halfway Home Animal Rescue Team. Oh, nice. Tickets are $60 a piece. Um, they will include hors d'oeuvres, cocktails, and a gift bag, and meet and greet with Dolores herself, so you can take photos with her. The charity benefits animals in need in shelters and families who are going through financial hardships and have pets along with them and can't really afford to take care of them. That's where this organization steps in and helps with those families, supplies food for the dogs or cats with the food bank, mm-hmm. including bunnies, too. I've seen that on Aww. their website. <laughs> um, you must buy your tickets by this Saturday, though, because tickets are going faster. It's limited space, and everything has to be accounted for because, like I said, there's gift bags, hors d'oeuvres, and drinks involved. For more information, you can log on to www.hhartim.org. And that's your Jersey news for this Where week. is it going to be? This is going to be... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have this. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Hold on. Give me five seconds. Oh, also with that being said, um, I did want to touch on a topic tonight that they did bring up the eating disorder that Jackie had. Mm-hmm. So I so went and took the liberty of writing down the number because I know we have a lot of viewers and some of them are struggling with things that we don't know about and they come to us to watch us to kind of get away from their daily issues or maybe things that they might be going through. So you can reach the National Crisis for Eating Disorders at 1-800-931-2237 or you can text NEDA to 741741 and get help that you need. Now... Yeah, no problem. I'm always here for the viewers. We're here for the viewers. Mm -hmm. They do as much for us as we do for them, and we really appreciate them. Mm -hmm. Um, The event's going to take place at House of Beauty in New Jersey. Okay. 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 See, and that's a a reason I like Dolores, because we've seen her, like, in the past, too, go to, like, the women's shelters and things, and she's just... I don't know. She's just a stand-up person. She's she's She is. I think she's she's Mm -hmm. not, you know... She's very much involved in the community, as you... As I said before, she was a corrections officer. Mm -hmm. So she definitely wants to help to improve her surroundings and her community, which I really do admire about her. And she's a big advocate for animals, her having a dog of her own. Mm -hmm. And her daughter's going to veterinarian school. True. So Mm -hmm. it's like an actual cause that they care about, you can tell. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know. I guess we'll get into predictions. (laughs) (laughs) After Buzz TV predictions. So, I don't know. We we already know from the previews that we will see the husbands. We will see Danielle. I do think that the husbands are going to be very lighthearted. Maybe at the end of the season or at the on the last episode or something. I'm not sure. Uh, I love how they brought Bill in carrying him <laughs> like they did at the Jersey Shore. Um, I'm excited to see Danielle. The husbands, to me, are cool, but... <laughs> want that juice. Yeah, that we want the juice. Mm-hmm. Like that's what we tune into reality TV for for the drama. When the husbands <laughs> don't really bring the drama, they get along. They're friends. They like each other. So I do want to see Dolores. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's gonna be more fake like producers in the ear. Be mad at this. So. <laughs> um, I think if this whole all pair thing is legit, mm-hmm. that's the only way I can really think that's. Melissa is having this baby thing. So maybe it'll be announced when on part three when the husbands come out. Um, I, for, part of me feels like Danielle isn't going to make it to the reunion seat. I feel like she's not even going to really get on camera. I, I hope she I does. I feel like she's going to have a temper tantrum. There's going to be a big thing. And then she's going to say, well, I'm not doing it. And then that's it. I, I can, can honestly see that happening because that's happened before. I could see Housewives. it happening too. So. I want to see... What really is going to be said about Joe Gore, uh, Joe Dude, 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 Judice. Joe Judice. Mm-hmm. Do the easy one. Um, well, I, want to, I want to know what's said about him because we saw in the preview that Teresa defends him to a certain extent, and she said that he only spoke to her the way that he did on camera, <laughs> the which lies. I think is a complete like lie. Candy. Like so candy. I want to see who's uh-huh. going to bring it up, and if she's actually going to be upset with Joe and Melissa because I feel like they know the truth, therefore they're going to confront it and they're really going to put it out there because she might be creating especially this Joe, Joe to kind over of Melissa. Have clear waters, even though they are 
are estranged right now and they haven't officially filed for divorce. Mm -hmm. However, she really needs to fully acknowledge it and fully move on. And with the Danielle situation, I really think she's going to come out and fight with everybody. And I'm curious to know if Andy's really going to give her her seat. And I think Andy will do it. Just yeah, to get her not? out there, but yeah. I don't think Danielle deserves an individual I think, seat. I think if she does come out there, if she gets a seat next to Andy, I think Danielle has done her homework and she is going to bring tea on everybody. And because she, this is her last. Hurrah. Yeah, because why else even have her on there unless she's coming with a book on everybody? I think she deserves to sit next to Andy. <laughs> I really do. I mean, Danielle has barely been in the season. She's not even. And she's in the mad credits, about that. But they have <laughs> constantly been. Been talking about her throughout the seasons, and she's an OG. So why not just give her the seat? It's her last time. Danielle seems so bothered all the time. I get that they don't get along and stuff, but if you look at the other women, they can be bothered but still go on a trip together. Danielle is just like a, a evil Disney villain all the time. I was gonna like, say Cruella. <laughs> yeah, she's, very she's all the time like that. Very. So I don't know. I think that she will have a seat and she will come with receipts. I think she's gonna be ready for it. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. 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 You know my rhyming skills was up there. You did that by accident, girl. Stop. <laughs> I mean, can't... she does work on the radio, though, so... Hey. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much all we have for the show tonight. We will be back for two more episodes because you know we've got part two and part three of Don't this smash. of this reunion we'll see hopefully it gets a little <laughs> bit more interesting but until next time you can catch me on social media instagram at angel saunders that's a-n-g-e-l-s-a-u-n-d-e-r-s you can find me on instagram and twitter at imb underscore cheyenne c-h-i-a-n-n-e and you can find me all over the interweb at russell ray silva <laughs> bye you guys bye. thanks so much Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menounos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. (laughs) The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.